In this video, we're going to talk about what happens when we mix an alkene with HBr in the presence of peroxides. But first, let's see what happens when we mix HBr in the absence of an organic peroxide. Now, there's two carbon atoms that we need to pay attention to. It's the two carbon atoms that are part of the double bond. One is primary, the other is secondary. A secondary carbon is one that's attached to two other carbons. A primary carbon is one that's attached to one other carbon atom. Now, when HBr reacts with an alkene, this is going to be an electrophilic addition reaction. HBr will add across the double bond. And so we're no longer going to have a double bond as the product for this reaction. This reaction proceeds, it proceeds with more carbon carb chemistry, which ultimately results in the bromine atom being on the more substituted carbon atom. In this case, the secondary carbon atom. Now, when you mix HBr with peroxides, the product will be different. It's going to proceed with anti Markov the carvigio chemistry. So the bromine atom is going to go on a primary carbon as opposed to the secondary carbon. And it's important to understand that key difference. So now let's talk about the mechanism of these two reactions so we could see why we get the products that we do. So let's get rid of this. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is the double bond is going to behave as a nucleophile and it's going to interact with the hydrogen atom. As it forms a bond with the hydrogen atom, these two electrons are going to move towards the more electronegative bromine atom. So initially, bromine had three lone pairs. Now it's going to have four in the negative charge. Now, the question is, where will the hydrogen go? Will it go on the primary carbon or on the secondary carbon? If we put it on a primary carbon, we're going to get a, second, a secondary carbocation. If we put the hydrogen on the secondary carbon, we are going to get a primary carbocation. Now, which carbocation is more stable? The primary carbocation or the secondary carbocation? Secondary carbocations are more stable than primary carbocations. And so carbocation stability is the driving force that causes the hydrogen to go on a primary carbon. So let's get rid of this. And now let's see what's going to happen in the next step. In the next step, the bromide ion, which is floating somewhere in the solution, is going to interact with the carbocation. Now this bromide ion, it can attack from the front or it can attack from the back. And so we're going to get a mixture of stereoisomers. So we're going to get two bromobutane, but we're going to get both the R isomer and we are going to get the S isomer. So that's the mechanism for this reaction. This mechanism explains why we see Mar a Mar Vigio chemistry with this uh, particular reaction. Now let's see what happens when we mix HBr in the presence of peroxides. First, let's talk about hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2. The Lewis structure for that is as follows. Similar to hydrogen peroxide, we have organic peroxides. The difference is, instead of a hydrogen, it's attached to a carbon structure. So the first step is to add light or heat to the organic peroxide to activate it. Once it receives enough energy, homolytic bond cleavage will occur, and the two electrons in this bond will be distributed equally among the two oxygen atoms. And so we're going to get two oxygen radicals from that step. Now, in the next step, one of the two oxygen radicals is going to react with hydrobromic acid. Now keep in mind, a half arrow represents the flow of one electron. A full arrow represents the flow of two electrons. So this oxygen radical is going to abstract a proton. And so we're going to form an OH bond. 
the other electron will go back to the bromine atom, producing a bromine radical. So this is known as a propagation step. You start with one radical and you create another radical. This step here is known as initiation because you're starting with a neutral molecule and you're generating two radicals. Or, but yeah, it's better to say that this is a, a non-radical molecule and you're creating two radicals from it. In the next step, we're going to react one butene with the bromine radical. So the bromine radical is going to react with the double bond. Now we have two choices in terms of where we should put the bromine atom. If we put the bromine atom on the primary carbon, we're going to get a secondary radical. If we put the bromine atom on a secondary carbon, we are going to get a primary radical. Now which radical is more stable, a secondary radical or a primary radical? Because secondary radicals are more stable than primary radicals, the bromine atom is going to go on the primary carbon. So we're going to add it here. Now we need another half arrow to put a radical there. So that's going to be the intermediate for this reaction. Now in the next step, the radical is going to react with HBr in a propagation step. And so the final product is going to be 1-bromobutane. And of course, we're going to regenerate the bromine radical. So that's the mechanism for the reaction between an alkene and HBr and peroxides.